He that plants trees loves others besides himself. Hey there, you guys. Thanks for joining me here in another episode of Bitcoin and Coffee. I'll be your host, Eugene Forrest. So what do we got going on tonight with these cryptocurrency markets? We're hanging out with our good old friend, Josh, the Crypto News, and we have my lovely co-host, Sammy, in the background over here. Ah, good evening, everyone. Say hi. Good evening. Hey, y'all doing? Good to see you again. Yes. I thought that you and the YouTube viewers, everybody, what's up? What's up? <laughs> I thought I'd keep this going. We continue to keep talking to Josh. Going to just talk a little bit about the current events tonight. See what's going on out there. As we're sitting there at nineteen thousand four hundred, everyone is starting to anticipate us breaking that twenty thousand dollar level, which has that mental barrier setting us on all time high records. Right, moon bound, as people like to believe. What are you thinking, Josh? Are you thinking that we're going to break $20,000 before the end of the month? Yeah. Yeah. I think we'll establish ourselves over 20K by the, by the end of the month. Yeah. We've made a couple tries at it, and uh, we keep coming back. So one, one of these times, I think it'll just be a little jump and then maybe bounce around. But yeah, by the, by the end of the month, that's a couple weeks away i think we're good we're looking at possibly what i think it's like 30 to 35 days left in the trump administration and we're anticipating some sort of a, a cryptocurrency regulation right to be coming mm. out before he leaves from steve Manu, oh, man. right do you <laughs> do you think that this is going to cause a pullback in the market greater than the 10 percent pullbacks that we can see on the average one of these classic 20 30 40 percent pullbacks that we see before everybody likes to say that we have them right before we go moon bound yeah i i don't i, I don't have a good feeling i i'm not I haven't read the latest news articles about i mean i think more regulation could be could be good for the price. Uh, I don't. It just depends what the regulation is, I guess. But yeah, we could pull back a bit, and then come up. Like pulling back wouldn't be out of the ordinary at this kind of time. But I mean, it's a little bit more than one month as much as a twenty to thirty percent pullback, and then also continue to rebound back over twenty k. Or is it that we'll see us get up to 21 and then they'll come out with this regulation wanting to pull back the price of cryptocurrency because we are starting to reach all new highs as like a last ditch effort on their way out to, you know, stick it to Bitcoin. Well, we know that Trump doesn't like Bitcoin because last time we had seen all time high, he had said that we had heard in the book, right, that he had said to allow the paper Bitcoin. The right. Contract, yeah. You know, which pretty much since then everyone shorted Bitcoin. So everyone always has a short term view on what they can do in the Bitcoin market as it's manipulated constantly, but they're doing what they can when they can. I'm going to go with, I don't know how much hate Trump like has to spread around. So maybe <laughs> he'll just accidentally, you know, forget about, forget about yep. this one and we won't get any regulation as he leaves. As he, out yes. The door. Yes. That he, you know, and, yeah. I mean, he had, I mean, I, yeah, I, I don't know about the whole, the, the futures and the paper Bitcoin, like maybe that was their goal to just take it down, but A, they, don't, they can't, they already use that. So they don't have that to do anymore. And I don't know, Trump hasn't been like that bad. No. He like, like Kraken's a bank now and stuff, but I don't know. <laughs> Kraken's a bank now. I know, man. Now, Samantha, we see. Yes, Eugene. We see the Mt. Gox trustee putting in today a plan to move forward with the 140,000 Bitcoins and the dispersal to the people that are owed it or whatever, mm -hmm. or wh however much they're going to be getting of it. Do you think that this is a possible dip to look forward to in the future here? Like, I mean, when this starts to pan out here with the plan or whatever, I know that he hasn't released the details. Yeah, see, it. that's so, the, uh -huh. you know, is it is it going to be over a three month, six month, year period of time, all at once on one day? But however, this is going to be. Do you believe that because this is such a large quantity of Bitcoin that it's going to bring the price down, or do you think it's just going to be another opportunity for these entities, as I call them, to get more Bitcoin on the cheap? I OTC. mean, I. I uh... 
Okay, so first off, very, very shady on the details on how this is going to unfold regardless. Like, we don't know how long it's going to take or, yeah, if he's going to just do it like, bam, like, and <laughs> airdrop, like, everything or if it's going to be in disbursements. Like, I mean, it has taken a, quite a long time right now. I don't think it's not going to take a little bit longer. And I, so it's it's hard to tell. I mean, and also, what is the price of Bitcoin then when they when they release it all? Right. I mean, what if if it takes a year or something before it? I, well, what's the price then? I mean, I don't know. It yes, it could have the potential because then I mean, everybody that's got it is going to try to sell it probably just because they're angry, bitter little people. But you know, whatever. <laughs> I don't know how I would feel. Yeah. See, I'd yes, like, angry, bitter, maybe, I know. Maybe I'd be like, wow, I never thought I was getting this money back. I'm going to open a 100x long. <laughs> right. And try to triple my money in, in two days. Right. I am staking. I'm doing it all. Like, <laughs> I mean, let's go to the up. casino. <laughs> see the people that held out the longest. Right? Yeah. Because there's been many opportunities to either collect a portion or cash or something off yeah. of you know, their claim. Right. Well, if if they sold their claim for cash to like some entity, then that 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 corporation or whatever could just sell it all at once too. Which wouldn't, or I I don't know how it worked. Maybe they sold some of the Bitcoin. I don't I don't know. I thought they sold off the right to get the Bitcoin. Like if they took cash, it didn't mean the Bitcoin got sold already. Yeah, it was it was yeah, some kind of a settlement that they yes money. that they the I mean the Bitcoin is still there, but yes that they yeah. only got a. a portion a percentage or whatever like they decided to take the easy yeah, but way there was already a moment it was a, i think it was a year or two back where the the trustee had dumped a large number of bitcoins on the market trying to acquire cash to do some for ca some sort of cash settlement and also to have cash reserves to pay for legal fees and all of that other stuff i remember it was a bigger deal because it did push the market down and people at the time were wondering why the market was going down and it was one of those hindsights 2020 and then all of a sudden it comes out that, you know, he was dumping thousands of Bitcoin slowly at this exchange, at the OKEX or whatever. Yeah. <sighs> the answer is that no matter what the price of Bitcoin is, be happy. Just some, yeah. maybe someone, maybe someone has insider knowledge and it's like, there's going to be a dump and I'm just ready to buy it all up right away. I don't know. I mean, uh, Hey, I'm proud of I'm proud of our boys, Mass Mutual, Massachusetts company, <laughs> putting in that uh, <laughs> 100 million or whatever. Right. Right. Yes. <laughs> then, See. Yeah, I mean, now the question. I mean, for a long time, the question was trying to get people to say that Bitcoin was real. Right. That's why I always say magic internet money. That's not a question anymore. Right. You really get. How can you say yeah. Bitcoin's not real when you can point to two dozen major companies, right? 50 millionaires, handful of billionaires that are all invested in holding Bitcoin. So, yeah. you know, that's not really a question of whether or not it's real. Now it's just a matter of how long is it going to take for the rest of the world to adopt it? How long is it going to take us to develop the network, right? To have these things that we're always talking about are the holdbacks you know, the graphic user interface that we need to make the transaction so simple that your grandmother can do it. That's going to be some slogan on something, I swear. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's not, it, it's evolved from magic internet money. Now it's like, this is, this is straight up hard money right here, but it's good. It's a good meme. I don't think it will ever die. The Gant with the wizard. <laughs> I used to see it on Reddit like all the time, but. Yeah, it's slowed up. I mean, I don't, it, it is, it's the same how a large portion of normal people, they don't, I mean, they know what stocks are, you know, they know what these things are, but they don't, they don't participate in it. it. They don't, they yes. They really get their hands on it. It's not until some of these more recent apps like Robin Hood and stuff where people have realized that they can buy stocks and portions of oh, stocks. Oh yeah, what's that other one? Oh crap, I like its name and I don't Inforo. remember. No. No, although I like their actor horribleness, <laughs> but no, uh, yes, yes. Where, I mean, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people get into it with like the penny stocks and that kind of stuff mm -hmm. as they baby step in when they're, but it's like, I don't know. 
I want everybody to know about Bitcoin because it is not like a stock, but it is that it is that that barrier that somehow normal people are just like, oh no, like we don't need to worry about that. Yeah, you're, I mean, it is true. The number of people that realize that you have to do something more with your money than spend it, <laughs> it gets to be a slim uh, percentage of us. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully, you know, people, it'll get easier for people with their 401ks. You know, a lot of people, that's all the stock they have. It's just, if they have a 401k, hopefully you can put that into Bitcoin or whatever. And that'll, that'll be a big, a big bonus. Especially because, you know, if you wait till you're retired, then you don't have to pay taxes on it. Like, right. But I used Robinhood in 2016, like, I think I was one of the earlier users of it. It was fun. It was fun. I remember it wasn't horribly crappy. I, I was okay, I was okay with it. Like we didn't actually we just browsed it. But I remember like being like I mean I hated crack in the second it was open. So I mean you know <laughs> there was a few where I was like oh it's okay this isn't horrible. Yeah, I mean they apparently they like front run you so you don't really get the best prices, but. <laughs> and that's how they make their money with no fees, but hey. whatever, they they were ahead of the game in regards to PayPal and like letting people buy. What are they? They support like Bitcoin and Doge, like Litecoin. It's weird, but <laughs> at least that's what I've heard. But you can't withdraw it, so yeah. you can't withdraw it. Well, it's okay. Yeah. You don't need to, right? No, yeah. no. Yeah. I don't know. I was reading that they got a new way of stating the cryptocurrency question on the 1040 for the year 2020 that it's supposed to state you know have you had any buying selling exchange interest you know in virtual currencies expanding what it was a lot more with a simple yes and no so regulations coming right we do see them wanting to pay for ways to find out privacy, right? We've seen that they're wanting to pay for Monero. Yeah. But we also see other things like privacy taking advancements, right? What was the atomic swaps that we were having with Bitcoin the other day? I don't remember all the details. <sighs> was this when I was doing the dishes? Cause that doesn't count. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> But I mean, Coin is still working, right? We see more people joining that. We see it integrated into the Samurai wallet, the Wasabi wallet. I know that we still have uh, the decentralized exchange BISC running where they don't have KYC. Ah, so right. as they come forward with the regulation, it seems like it is just a matter of them trying to continue to make it comfortable for the entities, right, that want to invest portions of their portfolio or whatever but that's great you know it's not going to control the bitcoin network that's why it is now at this time as they're talking about kyc possibly coming from the end of the trump administration it is that i just think that everybody that has bitcoin or cryptocurrency really should be looking at wanting to take it off of the exchange taking it off of the third parties and at least learning how to control their own private keys because that is what I see could be going away as we move into the future. You know, if, as I look four to five years down the road, I see all these third parties that give everybody the ability to buy Bitcoin like we are easily and, you know, daily cost average into it. They're just going to all of a sudden one day erase the ability to send or send out of their network. And the Bitcoin network is still going to exist. We're still going to have Venezuela being able to pay Iran with it. And I can still pay you, Samantha, as long as we have it on our phone and we control our private keys. It's just that there's going to be a bunch of Bitcoin locked up in this little controlled network portion that they own, that they're piggybacking off of the blockchain. All right, maybe. I mean, tinfoil hatness would be that they really want to know how much we have us all of the normals in the world i mean i wouldn't put it past like our government to really be trying to figure out what percentage its population owns of a cryptocurrency just because you know that's good things to know i guess as a country i 
it sucks that they've made it so you can't really loophole out of it. I mean, when it's literally like a list of six different, you know, then how are you, how do you say no to that? And then if you do, what are the repercussions of lying? Yeah, I mean, if you know what cryptocurrencies are, then the answer to this question is yes. <laughs> You've had to have done something. Just yes, it is yes. <laughs> now you're on the list. You might as well accept it. <laughs> Either that or it's going to be like, not that's that bad. The, yes, that's the list that they're going to come back in 10 years and be like, we know you have some and we'd really like to purchase it at like top dollar. <laughs> that would be, yeah. I mean, the thing with the whole KYCing, it's like, can you even withdraw from an exchange or you have to like go through a lot of paperwork to withdraw it? But then it's like, oh, we. You're, you're kind of like long-term holders where you're like, I'm never going to sell back to Fiat. I'll just use it. You know? yeah. And it's like, what if I can't send it back to the exchange unless I KYC? And then, but if you're not going to transfer, but then they're like, oh, it's illegal to trade in Bitcoin unless it's on PayPal or whatever. And then it's like. Yeah, see, that's what I'm thinking is that they're just going to start limiting. And so it'll be like, so we all can have like hardware wallets that have our Bitcoin on it, but like once we go to do something with it that becomes a felony or something like yeah you know. yeah that it's would not fine cool. but no it's not and and plus they're gonna regulate all the miners in the country or something and say you can't process transactions from these blacklisted addresses or mm -hmm. your node can't your node can't do this and that would not be good down the rabbit hole we go, guys yep mm -hmm. the bad bad regulation this that could or could not i mean yeah yes I like the exchanges that let you put everything in and they're like, they don't mention nothing. And then it's only until you try to take stuff out that they're like, wait, we need to know who you are and what you're doing and multiple verification. I know. At some point, are they just going to like fork it and be like, this is the, the, the one we like. like, I don't know. Like that's, it's just, you try to control it so much and then it's not even like the original thing anymore. And I don't know. To control it requires funding. Right. And as we move forward, we continue to see the government having problems with funding more people hungry, more people, you know, needing jobs, them having to subsidize unemployment and everything else. Soon they're not going to have enough money to try to fight the fight. I mean, how many wars are yes. cryptocurrency? <laughs> you know, they're only going to they're barely going to be able to help the needy. Right. And to continue to keep the doors open for legislation. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I don't, know. I don't know. I think if they thought they could, if they were really worried about crypto, they could find a few billion dollars. But they'd make it. Things are not looking good. Things are not looking good. The printer. Yeah, the, the printer's going to get weaker after a while. It's, you know. And then Coinbase would help facilitate their purchase. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> well, I mean, the might of the dollar has always been by the army. So then it just means, I mean, it, They'll just muscle in on people, right? Yeah, but see, that's the problem is we're all like on like civil unrestness. So, I mean, I don't know. It's like, how, what, choose your battles because, I mean, you can't do it all. And there's a lot. There's a lot going on right now. I don't know. People have gotten complacent. I mean, what's this, the scenario they use? The, the tea party, the Boston Tea Party was over five cents tax on tea. That was yeah. a lot. Dude, back <laughs> then, five cents was a, a lot. A lot, know, a lot. Just, Taxation, small taxation on, on tea. I mean, oh, could you imagine if we rioted every time the, the gas price went up or milk exactly. went up? <laughs> Be like, no, screw your twenty cents, man. I'm not doing well, it. No taxation without representation. You know, like they didn't even have a say. They were just like, our wives are really mad about their tea. <laughs> We've got to do this. <laughs> and I can't buy enough of it now. Come on. Uh, Oh, for the love of God. Well, I mean, <laughs> we're going to find out, I guess. Yeah, it's interesting times. I, I, I think, you know, some people realize this is innovation and we don't want to kill it. So, I don't know. I guess it's a balance. I, I listened to um, someone was saying the other day, it's like Bitcoin's good because it's like rules without rulers. And then the corporations and the government are like, wow, that's a really good system you have here of fairness. Like, I, I should be the ruler. I'll make it more efficient. So no. it's not, it's not the point. <laughs> <laughs> You're missing the point. Oh, I know. You gotta love it. 
I mean, I, it is mankind, man's like mind to try to control his situation, his stuff, everything. I mean, that it is, it is in our design to try to control our surroundings and our money and our things. So um, they are going to try to control Bitcoin. I am sure that they have many plans in the works of them trying to. I just hope that they are not able to, that it is, it is out in the wild enough, as everybody likes to say, that they can't. They won't be able to actually cut off all of the avenues if you really don't want to participate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> more. Being in the hands of more people, but I guess businesses help too, but more people would be good. I don't know, at least one of the great things about Bitcoin is that it doesn't take a lot of people participating with an ideal in Bitcoin in order to advance it, right? We could sit here and see all kinds of regulation come in and people become complacent with the regulation. And all it would take is a small group of people working on the blockchain to find a way to help improve privacy, right? And then consensus is what would come about, right? People wanting this to happen. Yeah, if the government did some really crazy stuff, I mean, I hope to God we I think people would, census. Yes, people would come together. People would come together. I mean, I would hope so. I think it'll be everything we need it to be when we need it. I, it's just it's going to be a long battle between here and there. Not only would the upwards price for the fight to be, you know, the million dollars, but also just continuing to get adoption, right, and getting it into the hands of the people and not how we're starting to see like grayscale wants one percent this person has a half a percent you know what i mean large collections like one million bitcoins at coinbase it, it needs to be we're always talking about oh well you only need this many shatoshis as a person because if every person had shatoshis they could only have this many but still that that's never going to happen when you see these people holding a million bitcoins yeah 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 i don't know i mean it's great to see when is the when is the average person gonna get excited and be like wow this could go crazy are people gonna start getting excited at thirty thousand? is like making a making the new all-time high again is that not exciting enough i don't know i mean it did I yeah I, it does seem like when the price is up or moving upwards that there is a lot more i mean views talks things people are watching they are more interested because everybody is i guess when you first get into it that is all you're thinking about is i can make more money like doing nothing like what like so that's why you think yes yes wait what is it now how much i don't know there's a lot of other stuff going on right i mean everybody is so focused on COVID and the numbers being up and the Pfizer vaccine and you know what I mean? The end of one administration and the beginning of the next administration. And yeah. It, it's, it's hard to, what were they? 40% yeah. of people, what was the numbers? 40% of people were out getting food bank food that weren't uh, getting yes. it before. Food like insecurity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, where they did not know where their food was coming from. They were having to actually go to charities and food banks and, and government funded type stuff. I mean, it was horrible. Like all of the people that they were talking to literally were like, I have never had to do this in my life. You know, I have no idea of what this is, but I need food. Like, I mean, that, I don't know. There is a lot of unrest. There is a lot of unknowing. So it's like, you would think this is the perfect time for everybody to get into Bitcoin. That like, this is the answer. But at the same time, these people don't know how they're gonna feed themselves, put gas in their car, pay the auto insurance, yeah. continue to try to look for work or whatever. They're, they're waiting on extra $300 in un unemployment checks. Bitcoin is the furthest thing from their mind, especially if they're hearing that it's hitting all time high again and they barely understand it and they're thinking they have to buy a whole Bitcoin at once. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I mean, some, yeah, I'd say like a certain number of people because of the virus and everything are not doing good and kind of just exacerbated the wealth gap. Some people are doing fine. Those people, I mean, yeah, it'd be nice if, yeah, 
some people some people definitely not in a good position to invest right now but you know, but you know, maybe this will be their first nudge, and then next, next bear market, they'll be in better shape, and they'll they can buy, buy when it comes back down, and enjoy the next bull market. So, now they at least if they heard about it, it would be good, even if they don't get in right now. But yeah, I mean, it's a cycle over and over and over again. That so, it is. For now, yeah. Cup maybe they'll have a couple more. I don't know. I mean, I think it's going to start getting real interesting when it gets down there. But, I mean, right now, they seem to be. Right. 6.15 or uh, 3.15. Yeah, a few more. When it's down below one per block, it's like you go from one to half. It's not yep, as big of a difference because yep. you're making a lot much larger percent from fees anyway. So it doesn't affect the total as much once it gets down there. So I'd say the next couple of halvings are probably going to be more exciting than future halvings. But, but we're all in agreement that the price is going to go up and that it is yes. just a matter of time. And there could be some quick dips with wicks as much as 20, 30 percent, but they would all be short lived as the supply and demand issue is greater than anything else going on. And the entities are adopting Bitcoin as predicted by plan B, right? I don't know. Did the plan B model get, that's the stock to flow, right? Plan B? Uh, yes. That's the one with all the colored yeah. dots and it has like right now there's the anticipation of the gap and the dot where we just like shoot way up as the multiplier. <laughs> I don't know. I've heard some, I've heard some people really destroy that stock to flow model, but it, it all, I, I think it just depends on demand and it's kind of hard to predict demand, but so far the model, I mean, it might play out. I think it's, it's plausible. I just, I don't think it's, I don't think it's that factual personally. I think all chart reading is like tea leaf reading. Okay. You yeah, see what you see. It, it just says it's like, it's not chart. It's not TA. It's just like mathematics. But uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, you can't make everybody demand Bitcoin, right? It is a matter of adoption, but it is that we hope that adoption is greater as we continue to move on versus the supply that comes out, right? So, I mean, we are moving in that direction. And it's just that I hope that we continue along that way, especially as we continue to see companies push for other companies to go in, right? As everyone keeps talking about, the guy from MicroStrategies is making such a publicity stunt and saying all of this money yeah. because he's trying to get other companies to jump in. But we <laughs> are seeing other companies jumping in with their, you know, as he said earlier, the Mass Mutual with the 100 million. Massachusetts represent. No. Um, yeah, Michael said, wasn't he saying he thinks Apple and Microsoft are going to get in? Do, do you think, I do think, you think so, companies yeah. like that or Google will ever get in? I mean. If they are smart, I think they will get in. I think if a fine corporation started getting in, it would be, uh, they'd be quiet about it until they had accumulated like 1%, 2% of the Bitcoin network. And then they would start talking about it. And then they'd probably come out and talk about it saying that they own this and they're running this many nodes and they control this many miners. And, you know what I mean? We're it'd this like, mining pool you just didn't know. Yeah, <laughs> and like, I don't know where you're going to be like, oh, Microsoft is controlling 1% of everything. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, they, those are really big companies, but I think it will be a tech company first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you just got to think, they're all going to the same whatevers, the same Zoom conferences, having their same little business dinners. I mean, these people are all talking to each other about their next financial move. So really, you don't think, I mean, they have to, they have to all have it. But are they going to not want to buy Bitcoin because they want to make their own crypto or... You know, mm -hmm. I don't know. The way of Facebook. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if Facebook would buy Bitcoin. Yeah. They should. I mean, I don't know. Wake up, Zuck. Right. Are you listening, he's, bro? He's too much into him. <laughs> he's so, also monopolizing too much. He's too busy. Samantha. Mm, Eugene. They're going to break him up. I know that you want to tell everybody what did you get to go do today? I rode horses. 
well, well a horse with other people <laughs> went horseback riding today i did over in the ocala national forest yes yeah wow. it did it did it was awesome i haven't rode a horse since i was probably like 11 maybe and it was not the same kind of horse it was big fat slow horse and mine was not a big fat slow horse this time my horse didn't listen, but it was an awesome horse. <laughs> it sounds fun. I've never been. There's a lot of horses around here, but and I get their manure, but I, I, don't, I don't ride them. Oh, so you get close enough to get the poop, but not to actually. Mm -hmm. I, I want a donkey, but apparently Eugene could not find a donkey riding facility. <laughs> there was only horse riding. Wonder why. I mean, if it was good enough for Mary, it's good enough for me. So why can't I ride a donkey? But no. So I'm going to get my they own. They don't offer donkey riding. I know. I told him it's like a petting zoo type of deal. You needed to go real low bar with like the donkey and the duck and the pig, you know, like for the kid party. That's when you ride the donkey. Yeah, I would rather start on a donkey than a horse. I mean, they're definitely lower to the ground. Yeah. I don't know. We rode for a couple hours. It was fun. My it, knees hurt after. It was ridiculous how, like, it was, it felt like I was doing work, and it was like, I'm not even walking. Like, I'm not <laughs> even doing any work. So why is my foot hurt and my knee hurt? And yes, my butt hurts. Like, yes. <laughs> I think they were, like, we had a mounting stage thing, so you didn't get on the horse, like, you know, from the ground level, because that's apparently tricky. Um, but I don't think they, like, wanted us to like you know stop or get off the horses or anything because how the hell did they get us back on because otherwise you know it's ride for 30 minutes get off the horse for a minute walk around get back on it'd yeah, be yeah. fine <laughs> i know <sighs> the whole time we were like how did the cowboys do this like <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know that would be that would be a rough all day <laughs> Yeah, or those race, those ra horse races. Oh man. yeah, the jockey people. Yeah, <laughs> that they look like they're working, but they're only yeah. going for like ten minutes. So, yeah. However long. They're also like five foot men. That yes. Right. <laughs> they gotta be light. They do. It's like you have to be like a hundred pounds and under five four. Okay. <laughs> Can you do that? Yes. <clears throat> so I think that's gonna pretty much do it for us this episode. What do you think, Samantha? Okay. 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 <laughs> I super appreciate you coming out once again, Josh, and hanging out with us and continuing to talk cryptocurrency, trying to keep everybody's spirits up, right? Because sometimes it's hard. The FUD's strong. People are really pushing this regulation thing. People are talking about all kinds of stuff. I think I had seen China banning Bitcoin again. As China. A, China, of course. China. One of the classic FUDs out there. I've been here a while, right? It's been a long time, Sam. And the hardest thing to do is to buy Bitcoin and hold. And it's the thing that pays the best. That is true. Any last words yeah. out there from you, Josh? I'm, you guys got to go check out his channel, of course. Yes. He is producing great content over there. He is somebody great <laughs> in the space, right? Continuing to get out those videos, keeping people informed because I mean, some of those news articles, you can just tell that English isn't their first language. They don't care. They're just writing to write to get clickbait. I love the ones that repeat the same yeah. sentence in it. And it's like, you know that, right? Like, you know, huh? <laughs> yeah, I should really, I should really rename my channel. I'm not really a news channel. I don't really cover news. I, I just, or have discussions or certain certain things I'm into. Like my last couple of videos were about Quick Swap, which is on Matic Network, like Uniswap, and every now and then I'm work. I'm compiling clips for Ivan on Tech Hilarious Clips Part Two. Oh, so if you're interested God. in that, you can you can subscribe. <laughs> it's only like four minutes right now, so I gotta get a few more clips, but. I don't know. I had, to, I had to stop watching Ivan. He's too much <laughs> shilling. Too much shilling. <laughs> oh, that's that makes me sad. But yeah, there's some shilling. There's some shilling. Oh, but it was so. It's good for good it stuff usually. It got I don't know. It, it was, was. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not buying his NFTs though. I'm gonna go Richard Hart on NFTs and say no fucking thanks. But. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't know. I mean, I think the idea of those non fungible tokens are they could have value. I could see where some, but it's like it's like baseball cards. Yes, you know, baseball it's literally cards are, yes. Uh, yeah, baseball cards are worth money than all of that, but I'm not a baseball card collector, so it's like you kind of have to the, one and the same, right? If you collected magic cards and or all that other stamps, stuff, or you're yes. probably going to be into collecting these non fungible tokens. But to me, it has absolutely yeah. no value whatsoever. <laughs> It's just, it's easier to flip a non-fungible token. I don't have to go on eBay and list this thing and put it in the mail. I can just sell it on the exchange and That's gamble true. on this shit. So whatever. No, it's, it's cool to like support the artists and stuff. I, that's cool, but. I don't know. How's your crypto kitties? Doing? I was just going to say, I saw my crypto kitties and they are doing a damn thing, but whatever. I'm not even attempting to care anymore. <laughs> like, zero. Oh. That was that was an interesting part of Ethereum's history. So. And then, you know, quite frankly, one of the few parts that I actually participated in. I mean, I I don't even know where they're at. We saw what generation cat they're on. I think yours is generation thirteen or. 14. Who knows? Oh, does it just go forever? The generations. Sure, it does, Josh. <laughs> I don't know. We did it during the way back when there was all the hype. So I mean, they're probably three and a half years old or something now. <laughs> Such a disappointing endeavor. <laughs> you were so excited. I oh, remember. it was my unboxing kitty, my Christmas kitty. I mean, I got it all, and <laughs> da, da, ha, disappointing. That's cool. I'll, I'll, how much are they worth? I'll buy one off you. I have no freaking for real, like no clue. I do have to. I mean, can you get me MetaMask and all of that just to figure out where oh, my? I have to go find the paper with the private key on it. Oh my Jesus! Okay. <laughs> Your dog, we can see her. Hi. Oh, you can see her. Yes, the adorable. We we in, I I showed them earlier, YouTube viewers, but I guess I guess. adorable. All right, you guys. I super appreciate you guys coming out there and hanging out with us. You guys got to go follow Josh over on his channel. <laughs> Keep checking out that cute dog he has. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> Uh, All right. It was good great. talking to you. Well, we appreciate it. I'm going to try to keep getting back with you, man. It, it gives us something else to do around here on the channel. It's nice having you as a good friend to be able to bounce ideals off of and conversate casually about what's going on here in the cryptocurrency space as we've both been here for a while and aren't really prone to the swings of the market. Nah, I don't really trade. And yeah, I heard you... Last night you invited uh, other people, so you know, guys, viewers. Somebody. They're not gonna. They're not gonna roast you on stream. Oh yeah, <laughs> this isn't filmed live, and you never have to show your face. As you can tell, Samantha doesn't ever show her face around here. Never. Have the little icon bubble or whatever. Just my face. I don't care. I'm just Eugene Forrest out here in the woods, trying to see if I can't make a little bit of a difference by continuing to have this conversation, right? This conversation is what makes a difference. That was what my biggest thing was in the beginning. It was that I just want to talk to somebody real that was telling me the truth about Bitcoin without trying to sell me something along with it. And it was hard. It, it seemed like I had to dig through a lot of videos, a lot of information, a lot of sites before I could find, go to Coinbase, get a ledger, put my Bitcoin over there. What, you're just nodding? I'm just nodding because I agree with you. Oh, and I'm looking I'm at the cute dog. Too. Oh, you're looking <laughs> at the cute dog over there. I can't see the screen. All right, you guys. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> we'll see you next episode. And remember, keep that BTC safe. Later, guys. Peace, peace. peace. Bye, guys.